In Pennsylvania, we cover energy, and we've been doing this for the past year and a half. And that primarily means spending a lot of time covering natural gas drilling in the Marcellus Shale. We're about five years into a big shale gas drilling boom that's, that's completely overhauling Pennsylvania's energy landscape. You have the state suddenly becoming one of the top energy states in the nation. One of the things you find, first of all, is how divided some of these communities are. And really, as you would expect, it comes down to money and resources. Who is benefiting from this big energy boom and who isn't? One thing we found, uh, and we figured this out pretty quickly once we started covering it, is that it's a very, very complicated issue that both sides try to oversimplify to, to fit what they're trying to say. And I feel like it's our job to kind of say, well, actually, here's what they mean by that. Actually, here's the context that you need. Mm -hmm. To be able to focus just on this issue and have the time to do it, I think that one of the things that I'm most proud of is that we've just kind of taken the time to explain what's going on here. One of the first big stories I did was about a woman in Bradford County who I heard was suffering from barium poisoning and she thought it could be related to drilling. One thing that sort of surprised me was how little her doctors knew about this and how difficult it was for her to get information. So I found a doctor in Pittsburgh and she was a plastic surgeon who had for several years been treating people who kept coming to her with strange lesions on their face. And she really took it upon herself even though it's not her background, toxicology is not her background, and environmental health is not her background. She really was trying to find out answers. And when I first talked I'm driving her, she down was the saying, twisting, turning mountain roads of southwestern Pennsylvania, I'm with Dr. Amy Pere. You can see how rural it is, right down where they're pumping the water. And so I went to visit her patients with her to this tiny, tiny little town that's not even on Google Maps called Ray, Pennsylvania. I got to the home of the woman in the piece, Edna Moten. As soon as I walked into the house, I was hit by this horrible, horrible chemical smell. This woman had been sitting on her couch watching TV for hours before we showed up. I couldn't even believe she was still standing because I felt like I was going to pass out. When I asked her, well, where's this smell coming from? From the water. She said it was coming from her water. And the doctor basically said, yeah, this is what it's like. It just didn't make sense. Why would you have clusters of people that would have inflammatory lesions on their face? That um, really hit me hard to be out as a reporter and actually experience what these folks were telling me firsthand. And then when I contacted the Department of Environmental Protection in Pennsylvania and the Department of Health, they basically said everything was fine and the two really didn't match up at all. So these are the folks I came across, this sort of silent face of the gas boom, who aren't getting any benefits, economic, you know, they're not getting jobs in the gas fields and they're not benefiting from leasing their land, and yet they're suffering um, from impacts, and there's nobody at the state government level who they could turn to for help. And that's what I found all over the state. I, I think this is one of several stories that I did because I felt like there was an awareness that something was happening broadly, but people didn't have the specific details. Butch Davey loves the woods. The 72-year-old gets visibly excited as he turns his black pickup truck, a truck with a Smokey the Bear head on its antenna, into the state forest. Uh, this started in uh, 2008, 2009, when Pennsylvania was facing major budget deficits at the same time that this drilling boom was really coming into its own. And the Rendell administration made the decision two different times that in order to raise um, hundreds of millions of dollars, they were going to, to lease out you know, over 100,000 acres of state forest land. When you tried to get information from the state about how that was impacting the forest, what was going on, where specifically drilling was happening, it was very, very hard to get that specific information. They'd say they don't know or they just kind of stonewall you. So I decided to go up and, and pick a few forests and really take a look and say, okay, how has drilling in this forest changed the forest? And I think this was a good way to get into um, the Marcella shale boom as a whole and how it's changed things because drilling in state forests is not new at all. It's been happening since the 1940s. 
but the type of gas and oil drilling going on there was much more small scale. Maybe, you know, one pump coming up to your shoulder and maybe a condensation barrel, and that was they had a very small footprint. And now all of a sudden they're clearing acres and acres, they're putting in these gravel pits, they're bringing in trucks. And uh, you could see in the areas where it was happening that all of a sudden what was once a state, well, it's still a state forest, but now it's kind of an industrial area as well. So it was a story about environmental impact, but it was also a financial story because all of the sudden in what was once a very tiny fund and it was dedicated just for conservation uses is, is this major cash cow and uh, people are fighting over the money for all sorts of different uses. Energy is a big, big story right now. I mean, we all have computers. We all want to heat our homes and not be cold in the winter. And the world is facing some serious questions. How much fossil fuels are we going to rely on? And what's the trade-off? People's lives have been completely uprooted, changed. We really have to take a look at who gets the bad end of the stick, who gets the raw deal. Our role is to kind of look at the economic side, to look at the environmental policy side, to look at at laws that are, or in many cases, aren't being put into place to deal with it, and decisions that are being made right now as this industry kind of gets up and running, I think are going to affect things for the next 20 or 30 years here.